My warm up has evolved throughout the day, so I figure with you guys, I'm just going to give you the full shebang here. So, and I'll put this up on the old canvas here. Um, originally, I had I had no intention of going over anything, and then first hour kind of became, oh, we have to go over this and this, and one thing led to another, and now I feel like let's just warm up and cover everything. So, I have these listed in a very particular order. So, for these problems, what we're going to do is we're going to graph them. So. We have negative 12x plus 32 equals negative 8y. I feel like this is pretty much just kind of what we come to understand as like a normal problem, like nothing fancy, nothing weird. What would we do to, to or what would we do first to get y by itself? Yeah, and that's really all there is to it because there's nothing else over there with the y, just the negative 8 that's got to get divided. So remember, if we divide by negative 8, that we divide right here, and we divide right here, and we individually divide right here. Remember that everyone is getting that treatment, and then we're left with our final answer, which is y equals. So uh, what will the slope be? Okay, uh, what will the number that's attached to the x be? Good job. So the slope is in this gold box right here. I'm guessing that you guys were just processing first thing on a Monday, right? You haven't done math yet today, probably. So when you look at those two numbers, the first thing that stands out is that it's a negative divided by a negative, which of course is a positive. And then the slope of 12 eighths needs to be divided top bottom both by four, giving us what Brandon said, which is three halves of x. Good. And then what's the y-intercept going to be? Four negative, so minus four, good. So this is a ready to go equation. If that doesn't look like something you know how to do, I'm gonna throw out a guess that you probably were gone for a good part of last week. It's pretty standard stuff, like get y by itself, right? And then if someone said, hey, uh, make a graph of that, should I try out my new graph thing? Should I take it for a spin? Yeah. I don't know, it's kinda, can I, can I make it smaller? That's the, watch this. Woo! So, I want you to move. Oh, there it goes. I moved it. That might be more work than it's worth, right there. Uh, where do we start this graph at? Don't say negative four. Down four. Thank you. Remember, negative four can be interpreted to mean that red dot. And if you think people don't do that, you are completely wrong. I take off lots of points for that. So uh, the graph, remember, starts at down four. So we're going to go down four and put our home base. One, two, three, four. And what is the slope? Up three. What did you say, Brendan? And? Oh! Right. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That awful noise is going to be on the recording. Someone's wearing earbuds. They're going to need new earbuds or new eardrums. Someone's listening like with their mom at the kitchen table. They're like, oh, my God, dear. What's wrong with your math teacher? Is he always like that? I did. I unleashed the beast. So on your graphs, uh, make sure you guys always graph a lot of points, okay? Don't just graph two points and then call it good. Always make sure that you graph plenty of points. And then you grab your ruler and make a line. That's a really fat line, so that's that. What's missing from my line? Arrowheads. Right, you need arrowheads on your lines always, like this. I can't have you guys just sitting back there talking, okay? Thanks. Uh, any questions on that? That was intended to be just a pretty simple warm up. Okay. Uh, for our next one, so each of these is a little bit unique, each of these following examples. So for example two, I had x minus four equals zero. You guys uh, know what to do on this one? 
So what stands out about it? Yeah, someone earlier said, uh, Mr. Aaron, I th did you forget to type a Y in this one? I was like, oh, no, I didn't forget. Uh, what kind of line is this going to be? This will be a vertical. Very good. Remember that if the equation only has an X, that it's a vertical line. And so that's just one of those things that we tried to ingest last week. Um, so there's nothing wrong. It's not broken. But I do need to get X by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and add the 4 across to the other side and get X equals 4. And so in a situation like this, all I have to simply do is go to the right, one, two, three, four, and then place a vertical line like that. So just want to make sure that that is not an issue when you get there. Are we good on that one? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and keep this same grid up here and just reuse it. So I wonder if I erase if oh, look at how nice that is. Did you see what just happened? I just erased the graph and it didn't erase the grid. That is so nice. In my world, you guys don't even, that's a game, that's a game changer. Thanks. Yeah. It's a big deal. Well, you don't care. Uh, example three. This would be another one where someone might be inclined to say, uh, Mr. Ahern, did you mean to put 2x? And the answer is no, I didn't. What kind of an equation, what kind of a line will this be? Right. We just know that. We know that when there's only a Y and no X, that it's going to be a horizontal line. The question at this point is, where is the horizontal line hitched? And to find that out, we just solve. So what would we do first? Mm -hmm. Subtract that 2 from both sides, giving us negative 12. And then the last step, giving us Y equals right. So again, the idea is, let's just go down to negative four, one, two, three, four, and then we hitch a horizontal line across like that. I mean, I'd be honored and flattered if you guys could be like the first generation of Mr. Ahern students who don't get horizontals and verticals backwards. So remember, X only is up and down, and Y only is sideways. It's the backwards of what the axes look like. So these last ones have a very specific purpose, um, and it's because they have fractions in them. So I'm going to see if I can make that bigger again. I'm sure I can. There we go. I guess you got to grab it on the border to move it, so now I know. Um, this is our fourth example. And I'm just trying to cover all the things you're going to see on your new assignment today. So that's why we're going through this. Yeah, we're trying to warm up, but we're also trying to get ready for all the questions you might be inclined to get stuck on. So this question is really important to me. And, you know, think before you speak, but no, well, no, no, no free something. Here it is straight up. You bothered by that fraction? You shouldn't be. Do you know why? Mm -mm, I like that fraction. He's, at, It's my slope. And, you know, usually, like, I've trained into you. Well, I've tried to train into you this idea that fractions are bad. Fractions are bad. Kill them, kill them. Like, multiply, kill fractions. But in a case like this, honestly, this equation is almost ready to graph. And I like fractions when they're attached to X in problems like this because it tells me my rise and my run. So in a problem like this, don't think, oh, I should multiply by two. That's oddly counterproductive because then later you're going to have to turn right back around and redivide out that two. So we're pretty close on this problem. How would we get y by itself to graph? Just add the four to the other side. And if I add that four to the other side, I get y equals nine halves of x plus four. <clears throat> So this example and the next example serve multiple purposes. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say was that, well, I already said it, not all fractions are bad. Not all fractions need to be destroyed. If it's a slope fraction, we kind of like it already. My second thought is this. So if I go to make this graph, get my fat red pen here, I start by going up four, right? One, two, three, four, and I begin right here. Does anyone see a problem that we're going to encounter? I'm almost done, guys, and then you can work. I don't have enough room on this real estate to go up nine and right two. So I want you to use your big brains now and help me problem solve this. If I don't have enough room to do up nine, right two, do I? 
So go big brain on me. How else could I go along? Yes. Thank you for saying that. It's the exact same tilt, guys, except instead of going up where I'm going to run out of real estate. See, if I try to go up nine, I wind up way up here where this little hand is moving around and I'm off the grid. So thank you, Alon. Well spoken. So what I want to do instead is backtrack and go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and jump back to the left too. And if someone were to say, why did you go left? My answer is because I knew I wanted the slope to be uphill. I'm always in control of the slope. Whether I go right or left is going to be the decider. And if I want it to go uphill, I go whatever way I have to to make it look the way I want. That's going to happen to you multiple times on today's assignment. It's already happened to you once, I think, on the worksheet that I gave you Thursday. But it'll happen three or four times today. Okay, last problem. There was a lot of stress kind of surrounding this earlier. So I don't know, maybe you guys will... Just take it and be like, yeah, I don't know what, what everyone was worried about. Um, last one. Two fractions. I worked really, really hard with you guys for 9, 10, 11 weeks to get certain things stuck in your head. Fractions are bad, right? Let's know how to deal with them. Let's learn how to peacefully work with them. Um, tell me about these fractions. What do you think? Should we multiply by 12? Why not? Because what? Not all fractions. There is actually one fraction up there that I like and one that I don't like. And I don't mean to be like judgmental, but it's okay with this. One of the fractions is good, and one of them is in my crosshair. Do you know which one is which? One fourth. The one fourth is bad. Why? Because it's with the one I'm trying to get by itself. Again, I'm not bothered by the two thirds because he's my slope fraction, and I'm like, you keep being a fraction. You do you, right? Like that's good, but I'm I don't like. This one, I'm going to circle it in red. This one is bad. Remember, don't lose your focus. What you're trying to do is get Y by itself. And so what I'm thinking is in a problem like this, why don't we just swoop right in and multiply by negative four? There's going to be some stuff we have to do that, as you know, with fraction killing, you usually only have one purpose, but then everyone else has to pay the price as you go. And that's how this is, too. So let's go with arrow colors. Uh, what's yellow arrow make? Ah, just zero. Okay. How about purple arrow? What does that make? Positive eight for sure. Uh, how about green arrow? What does that make? I've gotten a lot of trouble with this today. Anyone? Green arrow? It is plus eight thirds of X. And I will show you how I got that because I know that there's a few that would like to know but don't like asking. So it's it's four over one times two over three. And I'm leaving out the negatives because what's the point when they're going to cancel anyways? So when I multiplied that red four in, I thought of it as four over one and then four times two made eight and one times three made three. So that's where that came from, in case you were wondering. And then finally, let's talk about this red arrow all the way across to here. What do we get on the red arrow? Uh -uh. Positive Y. That is a massive thing to accomplish because we killed the fraction, but we also switched him to a positive, which means we're basically ready to go. So now the only thing left to do is to take these things in this white box and basically say, uh, you guys go ahead, you need to show yourselves out. Because I got Y like all ready to go, but now those guys have to get voted off the island. So our final answer in this problem is going to be Y equals what? We don't need the zero anymore. Here, let me show my work in a different way, since clearly I have completely stumped you guys with my line of questioning. So let's try this. 
if we subtract 8 thirds of x, which is what we need to do, then over here we will now have negative 8 thirds of x. Do you agree? Okay. How about if we subtract 8 from both sides, then we will now have minus 8 over here as well, correct? Mm -hmm. And they take the place of the 0. Look good? Mm -hmm. All right, so that I can put a box around and say, you, sir, are ready to graph. So where am I going to begin my graphing journey? Don't say negative eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I did another one of these on purpose in case you were one of the three or four people who was like politely staring at the TV but wasn't really listening. So make sure you pay attention. This problem is not broken, right? I don't have enough room to do what I want to do. Instinctively, I should want to go down eight and to the right three. What other movements create the same slope? Yes, I'm in control of the situation. Like I understand that if I go up eight and back to the left three, like I'm a big kid, I understand that I still made a negative slope, right? You work with the space that you have. like such, and then you grab a ruler and make a line, and that's that. So those were my five examples. Do you have any questions about that? Not all fractions need to be killed, okay? If they're attached to X, we like them. If they're attached to Y, then we got to get rid of them. All right, cool. The rest of the hour, you're just going to be working on 18 and 19.